Hi, I'm Alex, and welcome to Super Make Something, the show where I make something cool and show you how to make it too. Today, we're making this LED word clock using an Arduino microcontroller and Adafruit NeoPixels. Let's get started. The word clock is made of the following components. An Arduino microcontroller, which will be used to keep time and regulate the clock's electronics, a battery pack to power the clock, a backboard with NeoPixel LEDs separated by compartments, a wooden frame, the clock's face, and two buttons to set the time. I began by designing the clock face in Inkscape. The design consists of an 8x8 inch square with letters that will allow a person to read off the current time in 5 minute increments. The letters are arranged in a 13x8 grid and use a monospaced font, meaning that each letter occupies the same amount of horizontal space. Words spelled out by the letters are arranged so that the time can be read off as if a person is reading a book, beginning from the top left corner and reading left to right and top to bottom. Once I was satisfied with the look of the clock face, I cut the design out of vinyl using a craft cutter. A craft cutter is essentially a small CNC machine which cuts out a desired design by moving a small knife through the material it is cutting. Once the machine was finished cutting, I unloaded the vinyl from the machine and carefully removed or flocked each letter of the clock face using tweezers. While fine point tweezers work best for this process, any tweezers will do as long as you take your time and work carefully. This process can take a while, so cue up your favorite podcast before starting the flocking process. Once all of the letters have been tweezed out of the vinyl, I remove the circles in each corner which indicate the location of screws that will hold the clock face to the wooden frame, as well as the surrounding material not part of the clock face design. I next used transfer tape to remove the vinyl from its plastic backing, which will allow me to place the clock face onto a sheet of acrylic in the next step. I carefully removed the plastic on the back of the transfer tape and placed the tape onto the vinyl as flat as possible with its sticky side down. I then used a credit card to squeeze out any trapped air bubbles underneath the transfer tape. Once all of the air bubbles had been removed, I cut out the clock face using a small utility knife. At this point, the clock face was ready to be transferred onto a translucent backplate. The word clock's backplate is made from a sheet of acrylic plastic. I first peeled off the vinyl cutout from its plastic backing by pulling on the transfer tape. I then carefully placed the vinyl onto the acrylic, lining up a corner of the vinyl with a pre-machined corner of the acrylic sheet. Once the vinyl stuck to the plastic, I again squeezed out any small air bubbles with the card before removing the transfer tape. At this point, I continued to remove small air bubbles that were still trapped underneath the vinyl by moving them toward the letter cutouts using my thumb. Once I had removed the air bubbles, I cut the clock face out of the acrylic sheet using a bandsaw. Cutting the edges in a straight line was easy to do, because I lined the corners of the vinyl up to the acrylic sheet's pre-machined sides in the previous step. I could therefore use these edges as a guide to cut out the clock face's other two sides. At this point, I also cut out four pieces of 1 by 2 inch wood, which I would use in the next step to construct the word clock's frame. I next carefully drilled out the screw holes in the clock face using a drill press. These holes were drilled as clearance holes, meaning that they would be large enough for the threaded portion of a screw to easily fall through without using a screwdriver. After everything was set and done, the clock face looked like this. The next step was building the word clock frame. Using the clearance holes on the clock face as a guide, I marked the location of the screw holes in two of the 1x2 pieces I cut in the previous step. I then drilled small pilot holes at these locations with a drill. Since the acrylic was clear, I added a piece of paper behind the clock face to diffuse the light, which was held in place behind the clock face using four screws. I then screwed the clock face to the 1x2 pieces and glued the remaining frame pieces into place using wood glue. I then clamped everything together and let the frame dry overnight. Once the frame had dried, I removed the clamp and drilled two 16mm holes into to the side of the word clock's frame. These holes are used to mount buttons into the clock, which will be used to set the time once everything is assembled. At this point, the mechanics of the word clock were done. With the word clock's mechanics complete, it was time to move on to the clock's electronics. To help me align the LEDs behind each word in the clock face, I designed this template in Inkscape, which has the following important features. 1. Locations for each LED. 2. Locations of each dividing wall that make up the LED compartments to keep light from spilling into neighboring letters on the clock face. 3. Holes to route wires for each LED behind the dividing walls. And 4. Arrows indicating the direction in which the LEDs have to be mounted in order to be hooked up to a microcontroller. More information on this later. I first printed the template out on my printer and then cut out the portion of the template that corresponded to the word clock's backplate using a utility knife. I then glued this template to a thin sheet of plywood using a glue stick, again lining a corner of the template up with a pre-machined corner of the plywood sheet. 
At this point, I headed back to the bandsaw and cut out the backboard by following along the lines of the template. I next drilled out each wire routing hole in the template using a drill press. Alignment was not super important here, as the wiring will be hidden behind the clock face, however it was important to make sure that none of the holes intersected with the compartment wall locations, as these will be covered once everything is assembled. Once all of the holes were drilled, the backboard was ready for its LEDs. The word clock is lit using Adafruit NeoPixels. NeoPixels are small, addressable RGB LEDs which can be daisy chained together to form customizable light strips. After cutting a NeoPixel off the strip, I removed the silicone housing surrounding the LED in order to take up as little space on the backboard as possible. When attaching the LEDs to the backboard, it was important to make sure that the arrow on the NeoPixel was aligned with the arrow printed on the template. The arrows indicate the input and output data terminals of each NeoPixel, which are connected together using a common data wire that runs between each NeoPixel in the chain. This data wire is used to turn individual NeoPixels on and off. As such, mounting the LEDs in the correct orientation is very important. I glued each LED into the location indicated on the template using a small dab of superglue, pressing on each LED for 10 seconds to make sure that everything stuck together. In total, I glued 32 LEDs to the backboard. After all of the NeoPixels have been attached to the backboard, it was time to solder everything together. I used an old hard drive ribbon cable for the wires running between each NeoPixel as individual strands of the ribbon cable were small enough to fit through the holes on the backboard. While time consuming, the soldering process is pretty simple. Cut a piece of wire to length, strip the ends, and connect the 5 volt ground and data terminals of neighboring NeoPixels together, making sure to run each wire through the holes in the backboard. After this step, the backboard looked like this. Instead of hard drive ribbon, I used male jumper wires as the incoming connections to the first NeoPixel in the chain, which will allow me to easily connect the NeoPixel chain to the microcontroller driving the LEDs without additional soldering. I trimmed one male end off the jumpers and soldered a wire to each of the 5 volt ground and data terminals of the first NeoPixel in the chain. Two push buttons are used to set the time once the clock is turned on. These particular push buttons also contain an LED in their housing which lights up when the buttons are powered. I soldered a wire to the following connections on each button. 5 volt, 2 grounds, and normally open, again using male wires for each connection to the microcontroller. After soldering, it was time to add the dividers, which were cut from quarter quarter inch by quarter inch wood stock. Beginning at the top of the backboard, I cut pieces of wood to match the length of each compartment section on the template and glued them to the backboard with wood glue. After all of the dividers were glued into place, the backboard assembly was complete and ready to be inserted into the clock frame. I first carefully inserted the backboard into the frame, making sure that its orientation matched that of the letters in the clock face. I then fed the button jumper wires through the holes I drilled in the frame previously and inserted the buttons until their bottom face was flush with the outside of the frame. At this point, it was time to program the clock. The word clock is driven by an Arduino Uno microcontroller. I first plugged the USB cable into the Arduino and connected the other end to my computer. I next opened up the Arduino IDE used to program the microcontroller and open up the word clock program I had written previously. In case you would like to make your own word clock, a link to this program can be found in the video description below. I then clicked the upload button which compiled the code and transferred it to the microcontroller. The Arduino was now fully programmed and ready to be inserted into the clock. To wire up the microcontroller to the NeoPixel strip and push buttons, I made the following connections. I connected the 5 volt line of the NeoPixel strip to the microcontroller's 5 volt pin, the ground line of the NeoPixel strip to the microcontroller's ground pin, the data line of the NeoPixel strip to pin 3 of the microcontroller, the normally open pins of the push buttons to pins 4 and 5 of the microcontroller, the 5 volt pins of the push buttons to microcontroller pins A0 and A1, and the ground pins of the push buttons to microcontroller pins 8, 9, 10, and 11. After the wiring was complete, I attached the Arduino to the backboard using double-sided tape. Since a wire would ruin the aesthetics of the clock when it is hanging on a wall, I decided to power the clock using a USB rechargeable portable battery bank. After connecting the battery and microcontroller with a USB cable, I again used sticky tape to mount the battery on the word clock's backboard. To keep the backboard in place and firmly pressed up against the clock face when hanging on a wall, I next attached the backboard to the frame using masking tape. The final step was to turn on the power, hang the clock, and set the time. At this point, my Arduino and NeoPixel word clock was done. Because this word clock uses RGB LEDs, it can be reprogrammed to tell the time in a variety of different colors. If you've made your own word clock, or have any other cool NeoPixel projects that you'd like to share with me, please post links to them in the comments below. Thanks for watching, now go super make something! Thanks for watching! If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit the like button and share it with your friends. Your support helps me make more videos. To keep up with the latest episodes, click the subscribe button below. You can also check out all of my other videos by clicking on the video to the right and follow me on Twitter at SuperMakeSMTHNG. See you next time, now go super make something!